it was weird. So you look at the ingredients, like, oh, I don't even understand what, I can't even pronounce it. Let's Google it. And I started to Google and do my research. And that's where I saw that what I put on my daughter was actually really not meant to go on a person's skin. This is Changemakers episode, I believe we're up to now. Ellie from Go For Zero is a local champion. She's from the Moffat Beach area uh, here in Australia in the Sunshine Coast. And whilst the products that they source um, that are amazing, eco-friendly, toxin-free, you know, waste zero or close to waste zero are... Uh, all from Australian producers, it doesn't mean that you can't source them overseas. And also, I think the general flow of conversation talking around, I guess, the concept of trying to live toxin-free um, is universal. So don't think that just because we're talking about Australian products or we're talking about a Moffat Beach business that this isn't applicable for everybody. G'day. <laughs> Hi, Brad. How are you? <laughs> yeah, good. How are you? Good. Thank you. I finally yeah. Agree. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you. Beautiful. Right, I was just having some dramas with the microphone. I don't know actually why I'm doing it, to, to, doing this to myself for this live, um, this live okay. carry on. Yep. Um, the good thing is that most people watch it on the recording anyway, and so you know, with I guess technical challenges at the start, hopefully they can just go That's through. Good. And I, yeah, I'm still trying to feel like how critical it is, like whether you are you know, bang on time or not on time, but um, who <laughs> knows? I don't know, technology. So how's your day been anyway? <laughs> good, busy, busy, but good. Busy is good yeah. for us, so. Yes, yep. yes, mm -hmm. indeed. So hopefully I got that intro um, right and that most of the information was at least partially correct. But how about just to make sure that uh, you, I guess, give everyone a bit of a rundown on who you are and what you're up to with Go for Zero. Yeah, I think you did really well. So, so thank, thank you. Um, yeah, Go for Zero. So we started a year and a half ago, and it's a company based in Moffat Beach, so on the Sunshine Coast, and. We source only sustainable products, and they're all Australian families that are making them or designing them. Yes. And so one of the most critical factors for us is obviously that they are toxin-free, but that they're also sustainable. So we don't have any products packaged in plastic. So they all come or in a tin, which is very easy to recycle, doesn't end up in landfill. Same with glass, very easy to recycle. Because the common knowledge about plastic is a lot of people say oh, it's recyclable plastic, but like only 9% gets truly recycled. And in the end, it still ends up in landfill because it mm. down cycles, like they say, it doesn't get recycled. Mm. The quality gets worse and worse. Yeah. 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 No, that's um, awesome. I mean, that's the sort of information that people need to know about, right? Because, I mean, you know, like I, um, for many years, have felt like I was a good little recycler and I put all my stuff in the recycling bin. But, um, you know, if it's ultimately, I mean, not to say, not to say I'm going to stop that because I guess something's better than nothing. But uh, if there are other better ways to go about things, then, you know, I think it's um, it's good to know about them. So... What's um what's your backstory? I'm always interested in knowing, you know, people's background and I suppose how they've ended up becoming the people that they are um today. So I mean I pick up an accent. Is that are you is that a Dutch accent? Yeah, close, very close. I'm from Belgium. Ah, okay, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm um I moved here three years ago and I love it. I absolutely love it here. Yeah. Did so, you come straight to Moffat Beach? Yeah, we did actually, because my husband's Australian. So I met him in Belgium because he used to live there for 16 years. And then when we had our little girls, we decided to move back here because we came on holidays. And it's just so beautiful and so nice over here. Yeah, it's amazing. I love yeah. it. Uh, I've, I've sort of lived in quite a few places in Australia. And uh, they're all special in their own sort of way. But this is a really beautiful, world-class area just so yeah. spoiled the beaches you know and that's 
one of the things I think now, like, you know, when you travel, you go to other places that are supposed to be famous for beaches and I hope I'm not sledging two people too badly, but sometimes you get there and you're just like, hmm, I think um, it's better at home. <laughs> <laughs> we live in a holiday area, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, all of your family still back overseas? Yeah, yeah. So everyone, I really came here. I didn't know anyone. I, I have yeah. my um, my family in law, obviously, who are lovely. Yeah. But I didn't have any any connections to Australia at all, and it's it's really far. Like, you know, like even when you have a bad day or something like that, you can't just like say I'll, I'll go for the weekend home or something like that. You just. Mm. And it is a big part, and it's even a big part in setting up a business, I personally find, because when you grow up in an area, you have your friends that you go to school with, you have your friends that you go to university with, and so on. Mm. And you always have connections when you launch a business. Mm. Well, I see when I came here, I launched my business, and I had no connections. So I think that was definitely, at the start, a really um, an important part, and something I didn't didn't realize was really important, actually. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, I moved around quite a lot. A lot of my audience would know that, you know, I sort of grew up in country New South Wales and lived in different places. And uh, there's some, like, definitely some significant positives to that. I think it really shaped me as a person and yeah. gave me a huge appreciation for, I guess, a diverse range of people. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have those networks. Like, I'm not from Brisbane. Like, even when I was in Brisbane doing business there, there was a guy I was working with years ago, probably 10 years ago, and he had come out of private school and they were all, like, into, into mixed, you know, and then all the parent, like the parents would help each other, at each other's kids' businesses out, you know what I mean? So they've got a big leg up. Um, so, yeah, so I appreciate that. Um, and yours is even more drastic because you're on the other side of the other side <laughs> yeah. of the world. Um so when you were growing up, did you were you an environmentally conscious person? Did you grow up in like that sort of environment? What was your kind of family setting like? Yeah, no, I grew up on uh, I did grow up on the coast in Belgium, which is very different than colder and more grey than, than where we are right now. <laughs> yeah. But um, I did grow up on the coast and I also I was a lifeguard, so I was always I always loved the connection with nature and um, it was just an important part of my life, I think. But I really started going for zero. Well, my personal journey, I really started when my, my daughter was born because she reacted to any creams, any oils that you would put in a baby bath, like all the big mm. brands that I love because I love all scents and everything like that. Mm. And um, she would just turn out in rashes. Mm. And that's where I just started. Uh, it was weird. So you look at the ingredients, like, oh, I don't even understand what, I can't even pronounce it. Look, let's Google it. And I started to Google and do my research. And that's where I saw that what I put on my daughter was actually really not meant to go on a person's skin. <laughs> mm, I know. It's so amazing. I think as a mom, yeah, as a mom or just as a person, you think there's so many regulations in there, but there's just not. And I think that was a real eye opener for me. So I started to make my own creams. And then when I moved here, I started to, I had to research all new natural brands and I did that. And mm. I just saw that they all came in plastic and I thought like, oh, hang on, like if you're trying to do good for us and for health, yeah. you put all these things into plastic, like are there no other options? And I thought it was so hard to find. And I was like, see, I'm just going to give this a try. I'm only going to support local families that do natural, sustainable products and see yeah. where it takes me. Wow. So good. So um, how old was your daughter before you made the move over here? Three. Three years old. Yeah. Three. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, I had, and I had another one then, and um, my other one was seven or, or nine or some months when we yeah. moved here. So I moved here with two, with two little ones, actually. Yeah, wow, that's a lot. Um, what was your background work-wise before starting this? So I'm actually, I'm actually a psychologist. So I've got my master's in psychology and I also have my master's in business coaching. And so I worked as a trainer for a long time ago. So I did a lot of conflict training and um, so going into companies. And then I moved actually to, um, to a retail company where I started to do more strategy work. And so I worked in strategy and it was really interesting because it was all strategies across the different countries that we had to follow up on their KPIs and things like that. And that brought me a bit into the retail world and more understand how retail works. Mm -hmm. 
and I guess I just took whatever I love and combine it with my background. And yeah, yeah. Let's go for zero today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with that psychology background, um, do you get into, I guess, custom, when it comes to marketing, do you get into customer sort of personas or, you know, the psychology of buying and things like that? Or it, do the products just kind of speak for themselves and you, I guess, um, get word of mouth kind of traction? So I, I wouldn't say that. Like, it's not that I'm analyzing my customers and how they talk to me and how I can interact with them, verbal, you know, like, but I think when you study psychology, you just have a genuine interest in people. And I think mm. that's what drives me more in the business. So when I see customers, I just generally want to know what are the issues that they have eczema, what have they tried, what worked, what didn't work, find out what they are allergic to. So I think it's, it's not that I would try to analyze their minds or anything like that, but I think it's more the genuine interest in wanting to help people that yeah. really, um, and that's the part I think that of my psychology that really helped me. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so how did it, how did you kind of start? How, what, what did you, what were the first steps I guess that you took to, to get this going? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, it was quite impulsive to be honest, cause I, a certain that I thought like, you know what, why don't I, cause Christmas was coming up. I was like, why don't I just try a pop-up? I get some products in that I love myself. Just make a little store, try a little pop-up in the main street where I live and just see if people would be interested in it at all. Yeah. And so I tried and it was really hard to find a space because if you're not a real business, people are like, well, I'm not renting a space for you to three months. You know, like it, it was really hard to find it. Like I wrote letters to um, the owners of the buildings and so on. But I just didn't give up. And then one person said yes. And I was like, okay, I just ordered, I guess, three products of everything that I really like, put up a little store for three months. And that went so, so well for me. And I learned what my customers are after, um, what they really value. So the whole Australian, well, they only support Australian families is really important for people. Yeah. And even more now, I see that definitely with everything happening in the world, people yeah. are really, really important. Um, and that, that made just, it just made me finalize more exactly how I want to launch it. So I just did a yeah. pop-up and I was like, well, hang on, there's some interest. Let's try yeah. and online more and see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was kind of like, I guess, uh, you know, like a bit proof of concept really, you know, you kind yeah. of get a little bit of a feel, um, but before sort of, you know, making that leap to sort of go in, uh, all in, because obviously once you have a, a uh, lease to deal with. Um, yeah, your costs are going to jump up significantly. Yeah. So, what were the um, what were the the three products that you loved that you started with? Oof, um, I've got to think back about that. <laughs> I would say um, it was probably one of the skincare that I have still on, which is called Sanctum. And it Same comes thing. in a biodegradable tube. It looks like plastic, but it's fully biodegradable, even the cap. Um, that was definitely one that I absolutely loved. How do you spell um, Sanctum? Sanctum, S-A-N-C-T-U-M. -S Sanctum, all righty. Yes, what, what, the other, what else? <laughs> Australian brand. Um, so definitely that one for skincare, I would say. Um, then we had also the henna pads on, so it's reusable. <laughs> it's not so interesting for you, but it's reusable uh, panty liners. Yeah. So um, that was just, it was really just coming up like about a year and a half to two years ago. So um, that was an interesting one to, to take on. And then um, I would say or reduce waste products, because I saw you say Australian products only. So it's really Australian brands because. Okay out of all the products that we have. So it's only Australian families that we support, including ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. But about 90% is made in Australia too. We find yeah. it very hard to find any bamboo, stainless steel and silicon productions here. Mm. So that would be the main ones, the three main ones that is very hard to find um, Australian made. Mm -hmm.